Hello, welcome to the talk called Using Network Manager for Host Networking in OVR 2.4. Before we start, let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Aish, I am software engineer at Red Hat, and my main area of focus is host networking. Right, moving on the talk itself. So uh, let's talk a little bit what uh, what will be uh, in the presentation. So first topic covers what was the motivation behind this change. Uh, in the second, I will touch the topic of NM state to give you an idea what it is. Uh, after that, I will try to briefly explain current architecture. Then we will move to some basic troubleshooting that can be done in case of failure and finally closing it with some implications to the over to users. So the main point why we have moved is to have common building blocks with OpenShift. KubeWirt is using NM state to configure host networking for quite a while. There is a project called Kubernetes NM state, which does exactly what you, you would expect. In short, it allows you to configure bare metal host networking in Kubernetes. Another pretty important point for, uh, is that from CentOS 8 and further, the usage of network scripts is deprecated and it is obviously better to be aligned with supported technology. So, uh, moving, what actually is NM state? So, in the previous slide, I have already mentioned the word NM state. So, NM state is a declarative network manager API. Uh, it is a library that provides common API for host networking configuration. It aims thus to support multiple providers. Currently, uh, on a supported provider is network manager. But the benefit of using uh, NM state is some sort of common abstraction in, for, in form of schema. Uh, as mentioned on the previous slide, this co uh, complies nicely with other products. Uh, we can basically take the desired state and use it in other products that uh, work with NM state, which is nice. Uh, NM state also provides a common line tool that wraps around the library and can be used for uh, manual reproductions or uh, to test some things around. And I will mention that uh, later on. Another important feature is support for transactions. So any breaking change can be easily reverted. And in addition to transactions, there is uh, actually also a verification support, uh, which I will mention, will mention later on. So moving to the architecture, uh, on the left, you can see the over architecture. Of course, this is uh, simplified just to show the important parts of setup network process. So uh, let's follow the setup network process actually. So it starts by sending requests for, from web admin or REST API. Uh, this request uh, actually arrives to backend and is processed. Uh, first thing, uh, the, the configuration that we want is saved into the engine's database and then it is sent to, to the specified host uh, and the VDSM service that runs on it, which bring us to, brings us to the next slide. Uh, here on the left, we have again slightly simplified architecture, but this time of the VDSM or host manager. Uh, as you can see, VDSM cooperates with another service called Super VDSM. The important point from host network uh, from host networking perspective 
uh, is that any setup network request is forwarded and processed in Super VDSM. So uh, getting back to the flow, at this point Super VDSM has the configuration. Now there are two things happening. First is translation to the desired state. Uh, this desired state is then uh, sent to NM state and NM state uh, creates or updates profile of profiles of network manager which should result in the in the requested configuration on the host. The second important thing is uh, uh, handling persistence. Uh, based on whether is the configuration market has persisted, the Super VDSM saves it on the host to prevent any configuration loss uh, upon restart, etc. As I mentioned in previous slide, uh, engine stores the configuration as well. So in order to have properly working host, the configuration has to be stored in two places. That means changes in host networking by other tool can lead in inconsistencies between engine database and host persistence. So please keep that in mind and it will be important later on. Last thing that I would like to mention for the architecture is that uh, as you can see on the image, not everything is processed through NM state. Some things are communicated with kernel directly with kernel via sysfs or netlink. Uh, near the end, I will show you the list of features that are actually done through NM state and features that are not. And uh, I will share some plans for movement. Alright, moving to some basic troubleshooting. Uh, now that we have a basic understanding of setup networks process, so on the slide you can see shortened log entry. Uh, this is from Super VDSM log. So it starts by receiving what should be configured. Uh, the message setting up network is followed by uh, requested configuration, which is highlighted in blue. Good indicator that the host is actually using NM state is the message processing setup through NM state. After that, the desired state in green. Uh, this state can be extracted and used directly with NM state. Uh, since this request was successful, you can see in the yellow that uh, NM state has processed everything, and that's about it. Alright, uh, this is uh, all nice, but what to look for when the setup uh, actually fails? Uh, on the left, we have again snippet from the Super VDSM log, but this time the setup failed, so let's go from beginning. Currently, there are two known NM state fail messages. Uh, NM main loop aborted is what you can see on the left. There is usually more info in between the desired state and this error or inside the error message. Second error is NM state verification error. Now, uh, what is actually the difference between those two is that uh, basically NM state has two stages. First is the setup and after that is the verification. So. If something fails during the setup, uh, you will see the NM main loop aborted. If something fails after the setup, uh, so the setup has to be successful, but NM state after that looks uh, if there is uh, actually any difference between the desired state and the current state. Uh, if there is a difference, uh, this is actually bad. So. NM state will report this difference and fails uh, the setup. And of course, if you have enabled transactions, everything will be uh, reverted back to the original configuration. And as I mentioned, if, if you see the NM state verification error, 
the difference will be in the logs so you can see what actually uh, should be configured but wasn't. Uh, sometimes it's great if you can actually manually reproduce the issue. So uh, I will try to show how to do it using uh, NF state. Before uh, any reproduction, we highly advise you to enable trace logs for network manager. This can be done in three steps. First is to update the limit of terminal D. Uh, after that, update the network manager uh, log levels to trace for all domains. And finally, restart the services. Please just be aware that in this mode, network manager produces a lot of info. This should be used just for the reproduction and then revert it back. Uh, now that we have uh, trace logs from network manager, uh, let's move to applying the problematic state. So locate the desired state in super VDSM log, copy it to some file uh, and replace the invalid JSON uh, identifiers. Of course, uh, if you want to use the Python API of NM state, you don't have to replace anything. You can just take the desired state as is in the logs and just uh, use the Python API instead. It's up to you. Uh, anyway, uh, if you want to use the NM state CTL, convert it to JSON uh, so you can uh, either replace the identifiers or use some converter and then just uh, use the NF state CTL to run the state through. And if everything goes fine, you will hopefully have a nice reproducer. Uh, so to sum it up a little bit, uh, when you encounter setup networks error, the important information for us you on users list or bugzilla is super vdsm log so if it is possible uh, also the network manager trace logs are good and uh, of course the steps to reproduce the issues all right uh, moving to the final part Oh, what does this change actually mean to to the users? So hopefully nothing. Uh, the change should be absolutely transparent, so everything that worked before should still work. Uh, there are some issues that we have discovered already and uh, fixed some of them. Uh, from like the other perspective, Configuration generated by Cockpit uh, and Anaconda are easier to consume, uh, like for uh, Overt. Uh, important note related to this, and as I mentioned earlier, once the host is added to the manager, user should not configure the networking by other means, especially Cockpit. This is due to the reasons that I mentioned, because we store the configuration uh, in two places and it should be consistent in order to, uh, for the host to work properly or the whole over to work properly. But uh, on the other hand, you can use Cockpit actually to uh, see the configuration and to see the statistics. All right, and as I uh, promised earlier the overview of features so on the left you can see the configurations that are processed through NM state uh, most of the basic ones are ported and on the right side there are configurations that are done by other means so that means uh, by sysfs or netlink uh, the points that are not underlined are supported by NF state itself and you, we would like to port them eventually so most notably uh, SRIOV 
source routing, of course, OVS. Uh, the underlined items, namely QoS and refresh capabilities, are not supported by NMStateDF. Uh, to give you uh, some perspective about the refresh caps, so refresh caps basically collects uh, information about the host, so the uh, basically the run, uh, running state of the host, about uh, the interfaces, networks, etc. And NM state uh, in some cases does not uh, reflect the running state, so that's why we cannot uh, use it right now. But we hope that NM state will actually support this in the future, and we can consume the basically statistics from uh, NM state. Right, that's all from me. Thank you for your attention. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in chat during the OWERT conference. And any further questions after the conference should be sent to users at uh, OWERT.org. And we will try to uh, explain everything to you. So thank you again and have a nice rest of the day.